Archibald Knox these days is becoming more and more known. There's long periods of time when in fact it was in virtual obscurity. Um, could you perhaps tell me from the point of view of the Victorian Albert Museum and collectors of literature, what do you think the significance of Knox is today? Why have we suddenly come to acknowledge him? Well, I think the reason for his obscurity was because, in fact, uh, Liberties had a policy of not identifying their designers but promoting Liberties as a unified brand. Uh, and it's important to remember that. Uh, we're very familiar with this now, uh, you know, food processes with a famous chef's name on it who had nothing to do with the design or the uh, construction of it, uh, for example. Um, so uh, the, the identity of Knox as the individual um, was deliberately suppressed by uh, Liberties. And then when an interest in uh, what was then known as Victorian and Edwardian decorative art and the name of an exhibition at the v &A put on in 1952 at the Royal Academy, Knox was ignored because the policy of that exhibition in order to actually enhance the status of designers of that period uh, was, that, was to only include objects that in fact actually had an identifiable designer and of course with Knox that wasn't possible um, uh, because of the uh, uh, liberty policy as I've just mentioned and so he remained in sort of undeserved obscurity and so on really until I suppose the early 70s when interest began to be generated and in, in particular the 1975 exhibition about liberties at the v and I think certainly helped um, uh, well, promote um, the design input of various uh, designers into Liberty's, uh, Liberty's goods, um, Knox being among them. Other people at the same time, such as Rennie McIntosh, seem to get an enormous amount of publicity and awareness yes. so much earlier. Why do you think that was? They were architects. If you take you know, um, McIntosh, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, Joseph Hoffman and so on, they all trained as architects and designed buildings. And buildings are actually rather more uh, uh, prominent, if you like, than the um, you know, decorative arts, uh, and it always was the case. Um, so I think that is, that is one reason. Uh, equally, I mean, you must remember that actually Macintosh's uh, work started to dry up in about 1912, and rather like Knox, in fact, it ended up as a, uh, principally as a painter um, in his later years. Uh, so after, after after, if you like, the sort of Ar Arnouveau period was well and truly over, which was by the, by the time of the First World War, even the most prominent practitioners, including Macintosh, um, were no longer getting work. The Victorian Albert Museum itself seems to have very little knocks on display. Oh, we have a sort of respectable amount on display, but I think actually the uh, um, problem as much as anything else is that we don't actually really have a large as yet dedicated 20th century gallery but that is the, um, that is being planned uh, and this will be rectified. Mm. Goods such as this tend sometimes to cease to be objects of art and become investment potential. Do you think this will make a difference to the whole market as far as the I think uh, it already goods, has. Archibald's goods? I think it already has I'm afraid. I mean, so to take this example here and so on. And it's, uh, um, uh, there are only two known to be in existence, and the other one sold for a spectacular sum of money to the Art Institute of Chicago. So yes, I mean, it is getting into the area, uh, area of um, investment potential, unfortunately, for the um, series collector. Knox came from the Isle of Man, and the influence that came to play on his work, the Celtic influence, the background of Manx life, seems to reflect greatly in his work. Do you think that this is understood by uh, people outside the Isle of Man, English collectors, other collectors in other countries? I think it is understood, if not fully understood, yes. Um, uh, we aren't that familiar with sort of Manx culture and so on, except actually through the work of Archibald Knox and relating it to the sort of Celtic loops and so on that appear either in his metal work, his textile designs, uh, etc., which then can be traced back to traditional gravestones in the Isle of Man. You mentioned metalwork and you mentioned textiles there, but another element of his work was his painting. He's a prolific painter. Was yes. Very few of those paintings are seen in the UK, a lot of them in the Isle of Man. Yes, well, I don't know what the reason for that is. <laughs> uh, um, I think he's probably less well known as a painter, although, as you say, the paintings are actually of a, uh, top quality. And, um, 
uh, rank with anything else that was actually being done at the, uh, in the early 1900s. Seems to be a man before his time in so many ways. What do you think the future is for this? Well, it's, uh, I, I think um, Knox material is just simply going to become more and more popular, as we've already said. I mean, it's already in the investment bracket, the most um, spectacular and accomplished pieces. Uh, and of course, you know, the, the, the market will dry up, as indeed has um, happened with Macintosh. Uh, so we're going to look forward to the VA and A acquiring more and a full exhibition sometime, can well, we? Well, I would hope so, I suppose. Yes, yes, <laughs> if the circumstances allow, certainly. Yes. <laughs>